Welcome to the Carlisle HVAC Restoration Products webinar. Hardcast has a long history with sealing ductwork going back to 1965. Hardcast has been setting the bar for the industry with many innovations, starting with the two-part tape and adhesive that sets up hard like a cast, and therefore the company name as Hardcast, followed by the first water-based duct sealant, iron grip, rolled butyl sealants, custom pumps for adhesives, and self-contained adhesives for duct liner. Also taking the approval to a higher level by getting registered with the National Sanitation Foundation on many of our products, which allows them to be used in food preparation areas. Our latest innovation is sprayable duct sealants and custom delivery system, as well as the duct sense calculator and edge sealer. Our discussion today is revolving around restoration. Let's first define what restoration means. Interestingly, when looking at the World English Dictionary, it has the best definition. The action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. A pretty powerful definition with large impact. Let's define restoration in regard to ductwork. We have two definitions. First, sealing ductwork to reduce the amount of conditioned air leakage. The second is encapsulating or coating interior line ductwork to remove fiberglass and fiberglass particles from the airstream, which is primarily indoor air quality and money focused. As we progress through the webinar, we will further define restoration in ductwork. Why is it so important to seal ductwork? Of the annual electricity consumption in the U.S., 77% is used to operate buildings we work and live in, with the majority of that energy coming from fossil fuels. Heating and cooling makes up 39% of that usage. Studies show that duct systems typically leak around 30%. This affects the HVAC system efficiency by requiring the equipment to run longer, which in turn causes shorter life and system maintenance escalates. This also affects occupant comfort as the conditioned air does not make it fully through the system. This leads to additional plug loads as heaters and fans are added to make the building more comfortable. The energy savings can be significant when correcting these issues by rebalancing the system, removing the additional plug loads, extending equipment life, and service intervals. There are also codes such as the International Energy Code that require ductwork to be sealed. There are state and federal incentives and rebates for sealing ductwork to assist in paying for the cost to perform this service or simply a reduction on the utility bill. When sealing ductwork, being able to perform a quality job in the shortest amount of time possible allows the contractor to build a positive reputation. To understand why energy is important and reducing duct leakage is important, we need to look into our past. Here is a historical view of the U.S. energy consumption, production, import, and export over the last 60 years. As you can see, our consumption has tripled since the 1950s. You'll also notice our production has not kept pace, and therefore we began importing energy in larger quantities. The tripling of energy consumption is not a surprise due to the population increase over the last 60 years. From 151 million in 1950, up to 308 million in 2010, as well as the technology developments such as TVs, central heat, and air conditioning. An interesting fact, back in the 1950s there were about 6 million TVs. By 1960 that number jumped to 60 million. In 2009 there were an average of 2.83 televisions per household with the average 2.5 people per Nielsen. So more TVs than people. It is also important to understand where that energy is coming from. We have relied on and continue to rely on fossil fuels. With all of the news with gas and oil prices, you can see the need to focus on energy saving wherever possible. We must also be looking into the future. The projection for energy consumption through 2035 shows a much more gradual increase in consumption, but an increase nonetheless. As you can see, the projection shows a continued reliance on fossil fuels through 2035. You can see a projected uptick in non-hydro renewable energy. This would be solar, wind, etc. As we can see, this sector has only seen real growth over the last 7 to 10 years. Hopefully this sector will follow the projection.
but with a continued large share reliance on fossil fuels, then we have to focus on saving energy wherever possible. Now let's break this down into three simple groups of buildings, transportation, and industry. As you can see, buildings are the largest user of energy at 49%, with transportation and industry at 28.2% and 22.7% respectively. Of course, a byproduct of producing energy is greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases affect our planet. A goal for a number of years has been reduction of greenhouse gases. With the largest contributing group being buildings, this gives a larger impact when reducing energy consumption. As one would expect, noxious emissions would fall in line with energy consumption. As energy consumption shows buildings are nearly half of all the CO2 emissions, so anything we can do to decrease the amount of energy required for buildings will net decreases in the amount of noxious emissions. Breaking down the typical energy consumption in an office building to one step deeper, in the not-so-distant past, lighting was the largest piece of the energy pie. With lighting retrofit programs, this has now become smaller than HVAC. Now that the HVAC segment is the largest consumer of energy, once again we are showing this is a key area to focus on. I know many of us see personal space heaters and fans in their office places, doctor's offices, etc. These also use energy, so I do question if the additional space heaters and fans are included in the HVAC group or in the other category. Here we are showing the status and adoption of the different versions of commercial code in regard to energy efficiency. These maps are courtesy of the Building Codes Enforcement Program. You can see the states in brown and tan that have adopted the ASHRAE 90.1-2010 IECC 2012 codes, and the others are all on older versions of the code, and even some that have not even adopted the oldest versions of the code. Note these differences as this can make a difference in what you sell in, say, California versus South Dakota. Here we are showing the same map, but based on the adoption of residential codes. One would typically think that adoption for residential and commercial would generally follow each other. As you might have noticed in most states, it does. But in many, it does not. In the western half of the U.S., only Oregon uses the slightly older code adoption for residential. In the central U.S., Wisconsin, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi defer. And you'll also notice that Mississippi has no statewide code in regards to residential. Now that we have seen the energy costs, greenhouse gas emissions, and code adoption, let's relate that to duct leakage. Per the EPA, leaking duct systems account for approximately 30% of energy loss in residential and commercial buildings. In 2010, about 291 billion kilowatt hours per year were used by the commercial sector for cooling and ventilation, which was about 22% of total commercial sector electricity consumption. So doing the math, the leaking duct systems equated to about 87 billion kilowatt hours per year. In existing buildings, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory published data that showed a system that is leaking 15% actually increases fan energy consumption by 25 to 35%. With 25 to 35% more energy consumption on your fan, this will also give you 25 to 35 percent more maintenance required as the fan is running longer and more often. And because it runs longer and more often, it will shorten the life of the fan and require it to be replaced sooner. Another path to add to the savings and lower the return on investment time are incentives. As part of sealing duct leakage for energy efficiency gains, the states and government offer incentives and rebate programs to assist. You may wonder why the energy companies are giving rebates and incentives when this will cause lower energy usage. Think of the brownouts we saw in parts of Texas last summer and the rolling brownouts you hear about in California. As we all know, this is due to insufficient energy supply. Now think about the upfront cost to build a new power plant and who that cost would be passed on to. The power companies can keep from raising rates and encourage energy savings initiatives while saving the costs of a new power plant. The U.S. Department of Energy has a dedicated website to these programs at www.desireusa.org.
This is a database for state incentives for renewables and efficiency. You can also find federal level programs there as well. The site is searchable by market sector, commercial, residential, etc., by state, technology, duct air sailing for us, and implementing sector and incentive policy type. It's usually best to select your state along with duct and air sealing. Of course, you can also click your state and filter from there. Utilities are also required by policies and laws to reduce their emissions of noxious gases. For LEED certified projects, IAQ is defined as the nature of the air inside a building that affects the health and well-being of the building occupants. It is considered acceptable when there are no known contaminants at harmful concentrations as determined by cognizant authorities and with which a substantial majority, 80% or more, of the people exposed do not express dissatisfaction. This is from ASHRAE Standard 62.1-2007. Of course, this is a subject in regards to building occupants. Different scents and contaminants affect each person differently. You can have situations where there are no true contaminants, but have complaints based off of smell or sound, etc. This picture is a perfect example of upgrading equipment but not touching the duct system. The shiny new and clean air handler sending nice clean air through its moldy and dirty duct system. Where is the intelligence in that? Surprisingly, the EPA found that we spend on average 90% of our time indoors, and with the pollutants inside a building typically being two to five times higher than the outside, there is a larger effect. Depending on the building and situation, the EPA has situations where the indoor pollutants are 100 times higher. With these levels, it is easy to see why businesses have lost productivity due to absent employees. I happen to be that one of ten people diagnosed with asthma. And depending on allergies and pollutant levels, it does have a big impact on how long I will or can stay in a business, office, or home. The RS100 product is a water-based spray sealant that is engineered to seal joints and seams from the inside of the duct system. The product will cure with a non-tacky surface. The product is Underwriter Laboratories 181 listed, which requires a litany of tests for adhesion, fungal resistance, flexibility, freeze and thaw cycles, etc. The UL listing guarantees you that the product will perform as shown. In addition, the RS100 product holds a registration from the NSF for use in food preparation areas. This gives you more flexibility with one product and you know it will be safe. RE500 is a high-performance spray-applied insulation encapsulant and coating. This spray coating provides resistance to mold growth and is designed for use inside HVAC ductwork. RE500 is a low VOC product that has a minimal odor when in the wet state, similar to latex paint, with no residual odor once cured. RE500 also carries the NSF registration. Edge Sealer is a fiberglass encapsulant that is similar to RE500 and packaged in a convenient aerosol can. This product is designed for use on fiberglass insulation, fiberglass ductboard, foam insulation, and many other insulating surfaces. It is quick drying with low odor and is perfect for small insulation restoration jobs and touch-up work. We hold our Carlisle HVAC authorized applicator training classes in our Texas facility. We teach everything from duct leakage, how to test, how to seal, from brush to robotic, as well as return on investment, incentives, rebates, etc. We also always set time aside for brainstorming or open sessions where we ask the contractors what they are seeing in the market, what things they need in the market, etc. We have over 80 contracting firms across the United States and Canada and even international that are authorized applicators. The relationship has proven very beneficial for us, our products, our suppliers, and the contractors as well. In addition to training contractors, we also offer training for our representatives and our distributors. Here's a picture from one of our distributor boot camps. This is typically a narrowed down version of the contractor training classes. We know as you do that it is imperative for our reps and distributors to know our products, our equipment, and how those fit into our message on energy savings. After a training class is held for contractors, the first question is where can I get your product? 
We always steer them to our distribution network and work accordingly with all parties involved to ensure a smooth process that is beneficial for all involved. Also, not only are the contractors looking for RE500 and RS100, but they are also looking for bucket and brush, spray from the outside, rolled sealants, and the appropriate application tools. Those are additional sales to be had. Let's now take a look at a few examples of projects where Carlisle HVAC restoration products were utilized. Kuntz Memorial Lutheran Church in Omaha, Nebraska was built in the early 1900s. Engineers responsible for a full mechanical system upgrade project decided to utilize Carlisle's HVAC's RE500 to resurface all of the church's ductwork. Instead of tearing out and replacing all of the internal duct insulation, which would cost tens of thousands of dollars and force the system to be shut down for weeks, engineers specified RE500, which was installed over the fiberglass duct insulation as well as the internals of six air handlers. Medical office buildings and hospitals require high quality, low VOC, and low odor construction products, especially when being installed on a building that is in use. This project was no different. This project was on a large 25-year-old medical office building in Southern California. All of the three-story building's 1,000 linear feet of internally insulated ductwork was located on the roof. Due to the age of the duct and the poor condition of the insulation, it was initially decided to replace all the insulation with new. The cost and forced downtime of the building drove engineers to seek out a better solution. The engineers discovered Carlisle HVAC's RE500 and decided to use the coating to resurface the deteriorated fiberglass insulation. The project was completed over the course of three night shifts with no impact on the occupants of the building being without air conditioning and no reports of offending odors by staff, doctors, or most importantly, patients. In some situations, having a room with consistent positive pressure is required by codes. That's typically the case with hospital operating rooms. The idea is that if a door to an operating room is opened, the positive pressure of the room will not allow any outside air to enter the room through the open door. At this project, the hospital in East Texas was experiencing an issue in maintaining the required consistent positive pressure. It was determined that the ductwork supplying the conditioned air to the operating room had leakage above 30% which meant not enough air was making it into the room. Here, engineers had two choices. They could either upgrade the HVAC equipment in order to force more air into the duct and eventually into the operation room. This is an expensive solution as not only the expense of the equipment upgrades need to be considered, there is also a higher operating cost to power the larger equipment. In this case, engineers chose to keep the existing equipment and steal the joints of supplied ductwork using Carlisle's HVAC RS100 internal sealant. In this case, engineers chose to keep the existing equipment and seal the joints of supplied ductwork using Carlisle's HVAC RS100 internal sealant. This project was completed in one day, and post-sealing testing revealed that the leakage was reduced by 66%, and the lack of positive pressure was solved. Supply ductwork isn't the only ductwork governed by codes. In most commercial spaces, a specific number of air exchanges is required every hour. This is accomplished by bringing new air in through the supply ducts and removing the old air through the exhaust ducts. Not having enough air exchanges is a major problem in large commercial buildings, hospitals, and hotels. Typically, an exhaust fan is located at the end of a duct run, and if the joints and seams on the duct are not sealed properly during construction, the fan will pull air from outside of the duct through the leaky joints and seams instead of through the exhaust grills in the rooms. Oftentimes, sealing the joints and seams on the outside of the duct is impossible as the duct is located behind the walls and in the ceilings. This is where the Isaac robot and RS-100 come into play. Using Carlisle HVAC's RS100 internal sealant and the Isaac robotic sprayer to seal ductwork internally is exactly what was done on this project. An exhaust shaft was leaking in excess of 18% of the CFM being delivered by the air handler. In order to meet the minimum air exchange rate, the leakage needed to be below 5%. After being sealed with RS100 and Isaac, the leakage rate was 2%, 
which is a total reduction of 90%. Here is another project where Isaac came to the rescue. When pressure testing was performed on a new hospital addition, it was discovered that the originally installed duct sealant had failed. The leakage of 4,220 CFM was over five times the allowable leakage of 762 CFM. Resealing the joints was next to impossible as the duct had already been externally wrapped with insulation and was also surrounded by conduit, cables, and piping. Unwrapping the insulation and brushing new mastic would set the project back months and cost tens of thousands of dollars in labor. With the use of the Isaac robotic sprayer, the project was completed in only three days. Post-sealing pressure tests revealed that the Isaac and the RS-100 were able to surpass the allowable leakage and seal the system down to 577 CFM. That's a reduction of 86%. Needless to say, all parties were satisfied and the project moved along with no delays. A full system restoration project was performed at the War Memorial and Performing Arts Center in San Francisco which was completed by a Carlisle-trained winning contractor. Sealant installation used both the Isaac robotic sprayer and hand spraying, using RS-100 and RE-500 hard specified. Since the early 1930s, the Duke University Chapel has stood on the highest ridge of Duke's West Campus. This iconic building has a rich history and is known for its architectural grandeur. Over the past eight decades, Duke University Chapel has been the site of thousands of services, welcomed millions of guests, and served as a preeminent icon for the distinguished university. In May of 2015, Duke University kicked off a year-long restoration project to rehabilitate the interior and exterior of the chapel. Pervent, a full-service HVAC cleaning and sealing company with experience in historic restoration projects, was tasked with restoring the entire HVAC system, including 100 feet of underground ductwork. Prevent, located in Cary, North Carolina, specializes in airside and waterside HVAC restoration projects. The company cleans ductwork, air handling units, cooling towers, condensing units, and boilers. If it has to do with an HVAC system, we can clean it, said Henry Baker, president of Prevent. With over 28 years of experience in commercial HVAC installation, renovation, and repair, the professionals at Prevent have the knowledge and expertise to clean and seal any commercial HVAC system. Duke University was replacing the existing air handling units, and Prevent was responsible for cleaning all of the remaining ductwork and grills. The project's scope was eventually expanded to include 100 feet of underground fresh air ducts that had previously been taken out of service. They suggested to put it back in service, and they wanted to coat it, so we suggested using Carlisle's RE500, said Baker. A building's ductwork can be resurfaced as opposed to being replaced with RE500, a high-performance spray-applied insulation coating. Coating the fiberglass liner or ductboard with RE500 increases the equipment's service life at a fraction of the cost of replacement. RE500 is a low VOC product that can be used inside the HVAC ductwork. Prevents technicians first cleaned the ductwork with vacuums, then they performed a more thorough cleaning using whips and air washing. Duct cleaning is extremely important for a facility to have a healthy and efficient airflow system, and after cleaning, sealing, and coating the duct system, it is essential to ensure that the dirty, dusty air is not pooled into the ducts and recirculated throughout the building. Architects and engineers are starting to realize that you can't just replace an air handling unit and not clean the existing ductwork and the air distribution, especially if you put new ductwork downstream. I've seen cases where dirt from old ductwork blew into the new ductwork and then the entire duct system had to be cleaned, said Baker. Because the Duke University Chapel is such a significant and important building, Prevent's first priority was to preserve the historic elements including the brass grills, limestone walls, and woodwork. The air distribution was literally on top of the woodwork, and the entire back of the seats were the air plenum. So we had to go down in back of that and clean that out. Getting zoning and enough suction on that was tough, said Baker. After the cleanup phase of the project was complete, Prevent technicians hand-applied RE500 using an airless sprayer. 
crews really like RE500 because it flows through the airless sprayer well and doesn't clog it up, and it provides a nice even coat, said Baker. In addition, it is a low VOC product that can be used inside an HVAC system, unlike many other products. It works better and costs less, said Baker. How can you beat that?